There are many ways to describe our present generation. But one way to describe our generation is we have become a fatherless generation. Children grow up without fathers. Sometimes because of broken marriage vows, because of the fight of their parents, sometimes because of work abroad, because opportunities in the country are very scarce and are lacking. We are becoming a fatherless generation because men beget children from women and refuse to take responsibility. But that is just one side of the story why we have become a fatherless generation. The other side of the story is children don't like fathers. The other side of the story why we have become a fatherless generation is that even if the fathers are at home, or even if the fathers are close by, sons and daughters don't like fathers in their lives. And uh, this same situation is the situation in the parable of the prodigal son. There is something technical about the original Greek when the younger son said to the father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. The younger son did not only ask for land and money. The younger son asked for something greater than that. What was it? The original language says, Substance. He was not only asking for money and properties. He was asking for the substance. In other words, give it to me. I don't like to have any relations with you. I don't like you giving me gifts. I don't like the feeling of being beholden to you. I don't like it. I want to cut off relationship and mine should now be mine. And from now on, this son was cutting his relationship with his father. He was not only materialistic, he was not only greedy and avaricious, he was not only disrespectful, there was something greater than that. He wanted all for himself. He didn't like any authority over him. I don't like any father over me. I don't like any power over me. I don't like anyone giving me gifts such that I become beholden. I want all for myself and I want to be independent. I want out in this father-son relationship. I am explaining this to you because I want you to understand that this is something more serious than asking for inheritance. This is really cutting ties to the substance. And then, the older son. The older son did not like to enter. As it were, he also says, I don't like a father like that. I have obeyed you. I have worked for you. You never paid me back. And now, your son who says, I don't like to have anything with you, you give him a party, I don't like to have anything to do with him. That is why he did not like to enter the house. And yet, the father knew. The father knew that his son cannot live independently. The father knew that the elder son could not live outside the house. The father knew that, such that even if both of them did not like to have any father in their lives anymore, the father patiently, kindly, gently, respectfully even, explained to the two sons, it cannot be. 
you will always need a father. You will always need a father. Your father may not be respectable, but he be, his being respectable is not the reason for you to respect him. Your father may not look dignified. Your father may be a drunkard. Your father may be a convicted criminal. Your father might have violated you. Your father may be a rapist or a thief or a robber or a killer. Your father may be an abortionist. All of these your father could do. And all of these could be reasons for you to say, My father is not respectable. But fathers must be respected, not because they are respectable, but simply because they are fathers. Tatay. Hindi pinag-uusapan kung kagalang-galang. Hindi pinag-uusapan kung mabuti o mabait. Ang tanong lang ay, kung tatay mo, kilalanin mo, at igalang mo, at mahalin mo. My dear brothers and sisters, the crime of the two sons is that they wanted to cut off any relationship with their father. We know the feeling of having a broken relationship with our fathers. If not personally, I am sure you have seen it in many lives. Broken fathers, absentee fathers, fatherless families, fatherless who are fathers who are negligent, and sons and daughters who don't like to have fathers in their lives. But the parable, the gospel, teaches us only one thing. We can never be independent from authority. We can never be independent from parenting. We cannot be independent from fatherhood and motherhood. We cannot be independent from bosses who have authority over us. The reality, my dear brothers and sisters, is we are all dependent on one another because we are interdependent. And no man is an island. No man stands alone. No man can live alone. Today, I only request you, pray for your father. He might not be the best of fathers. He might not be very respectable, very dignified, or even a role model. But there is only one reason for loving and respecting fathers. They are God's image for us. They are God's mirror for us. And a father's love is the mirror of the Father in Heaven's love for us. Today, let us recognize broken families, fatherless families, children who hate their fathers. May we learn the meaning of true obedience, that there is no such a thing as real independence. Because for as long as we live, we are interdependent. What we do hurts others. What we do benefits others. What we do affects others. What we do creates ripples in the pond of life. What we do makes this world better or worse. Father in heaven, thank you for showing us perfect fatherhood. And although our experience of fatherhood is broken and bruised and wounded, teach us to respect fathers nevertheless, because fathers are gifts from you, dear God.